This video was recorded two days after COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. At the time, we didn't fully understand what this meant and how important masks and physical distancing would become. If you watched our two previous videos, you know we drove from our new hometown, Zagreb, Croatia, to Budapest, Hungary during the COVID-19 state of emergency. Yesterday, we spent the evening in Europe's largest hot spring bath called the Sushini. We had left Ember behind at our Airbnb, and little did we know, our Airbnb host has messaged him saying that Ember has been barking non-stop and the neighbors are complaining. This brings us to today. In this video, we visit Budapest through a tour company and Ember, having lost her privilege to stay home alone, will be joining us for everything today. Just had our breakfast and coffee at the Goat Herder coffee shop. Did you like it? I loved it. It was such a cute atmosphere and I got to take a cappuccino with oat milk, which is hard to find in Zagreb, so I'm really glad I found that here and I had an avocado toast. We're doing a tour that starts at 10.30 with free walking tours Budapest. We're gonna walk about three and a half kilometers, should last about three hours. See the major sites. I think the one we picked or the one that we're doing today is gonna be called the Classic. I don't know how they manage these tours. There must be, there's at least 50 people. So it should be interesting to walk around and Amber counted as a plus one. So she's on the list. <laughs> on the list. So they have a Hollywood style walk of fame here, but instead of actors, it's all winemakers. And so every year they decide who's the best winemaker and that person gets a star on this walk of fame, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so we learned lots of interesting fun facts about this church. One of the cool things is that they asked for a special permission from the Pope to have at the altar, instead of Jesus, Saint Stephen. Oh, and that makes sense because it's called St. Stephen's Basilica. <laughs> it's not just a random saint. A small fact <laughs> that I missed. So we learned that goulash is named after goulash, which is a Hungarian soup. Everywhere else in the world they call it a stew. He also gave us a bunch of other traditional foods to try while we're here, which was cool. Because yeah. we didn't know about any of them. So we got three things we got to try before we leave here. On a bridge? <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's called the Shisenyi oh. Chain Bridge. And there's two big lions on it that we're supposed to look at for anything weird. It is extremely cold walking on this bridge. Like wind, you're not in the sun. So we're now on the Buddha side of Budapest. It's not Budapest, it's Budapest. We rushed across the bridge to make it back to our group, I only to get there. <laughs> only to get there and he tells us that it's break time. We got 10 minutes to go buy whatever we want or go to the bathroom. So we're okay. gonna get a beer and maybe something to eat. Ooh, the gold version. The tour is really good so far. I really like how he tries to give you more information more than just what you're looking at at the time. Like the last stop had a little language lesson built in, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, and I really like the, the concept that it's free. I think that's super cool, and that you give what you can in terms of the value that you think that it's worth. I feel like two hours and a half is a good chunk of time. You can do it either at 10.30 or at 2.30. 30 is a perfect time to do it because then you have your whole afternoon to go visit things that you can get a chance to. Amber is now part of a nomadic pack. <laughs> that's what she thinks. She's also showing off how fast she can go up, just like climbing towards other people, swerving into the lake. And then runs back to us to prove how slow we are. Yep. Currently climbing up to Kessel Hill. Very nice views up here so far. Yeah, and if you wonder where the views are from, go to Pest. That's where the views are. No, Buddha. Okay. And it's Castle Hill. Sorry, I just stole your... <laughs> so come to Buda if you want to see the Pesh view. We just saw the White House of the yes, President yeah, of Hungary, but he doesn't actually live there. It's just his office now. But we just saw a changing of the guard, which was really cute. Oh, and they're real soldiers. I bring you presidential... Yeah. for doing this but we're both really craving a Starbucks because they don't have any in Croatia. <laughs> so, 
Just... And there's one up here on Castle Hill of all places. Oh. All right, so never mind. It is five dollars Canadian for a small coffee here. So just a drip coffee, not even a fancy like latte or anything. Yeah. A cookie was four bucks too. So Fisherman's Bastion up on Castle Hill. Amazing views, but you're not the only one taking pictures. I guarantee that. Everyone. Chili Bridge on the way to Friki Papa for lunch. Which is a restaurant that has good reviews of traditional Hungarian food for a decent price too. Super hungry. Probably stop for a coffee first and relax because Vejo's feet hurt. <laughs> Should have brought my sneakers. Change of plans, her feet hurt so much. We have to go to a footlocker <laughs> for Vejo to buy running shoes because she only brought these like fashion Nova boots or something that's meant for going out. Although we're already, we've walked 12 kilometers already today. We're here at Tecmos. So for the price of one coffee at Starbucks, you can get two cafe Americanos at this restaurant. Coffee stop complete. Now we seem to be in the shopping district because I'm seeing a bunch of stores. Every square that you cross is another like beautiful zone that could be the main square for the city. Budapest doesn't stop, get it. My savior. Target acquired. <laughs> We've done four shoe stores, no Target acquired yet. We're gonna, we have one left, it's gonna be the Nike store. That's always been most favorite brand, so I think we'll have good luck there. And it's a little hard to convert prices too when you're shoe shopping because the currency is so like out there. So now though, we're taking a pit stop to try a traditional Hungarian dessert, which we call Kuchtos. And the top place on TripAdvisor was Molnars Kuchtos Kalac. That was well done. <laughs> Which is right here, so we're gonna go have that, take a break from shoe shopping, and then get back to business. And the way that they describe it is it's a hollow cake and it's named after a chimney. Yeah. So I came with different flavors from walnut to cherry to vanilla, but we went with chocolate. And they serve it warm, and it takes about three minutes until you get your order. It's very good. I'm really glad our tour guide recommended this and mentioned that it was a traditional Hungarian dessert. Because usually those are like cakes that are kind of like a shortbread, which I'm not a big fan of. This, though, seems like a modern thing to be traditional. You can fill it with ice cream, which we didn't do. It's so good. We walked all the way here to try langos, which is a traditional Hungarian food again, but it looks like a fried flatbread and this was ranked as the best spot to come to in Budapest and it's abandoned. Sour cream and cheese, the traditional. The guide said do not get one with the town. The Hungarian puppy dies every time you order one. Well that place is a definite must go. It was so good. If you're not super hungry, you could definitely share it with someone. It's quite large. I had the garlic and sour cream and it tasted like a garlic bread that you just mush together and then deep fried. It was so good. Two for two on Hungarian food so far. Amazing. Great. Just got my new shoes and it's like I'm walking on clouds. Wasn't my all time favorite pair of shoes, but I had to make a quick decision. Long day of vlogging today. That's what happens with short trips to awesome cities. Mm -hmm. Budapest is simply too big for one full day and about a half day. We're now gonna go try the Ruin Bars, which are just opening. Some of them open at five, which is five o'clock now. But we have more odds of bringing the dog in and they've just opened. Tov was nice, so it's known to be the fanciest of all the ruined bars, and it doesn't really feel like one anymore because it's been like revamped and renovated. But so now we're trying to find one that looks a little more ruinish. 
yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah, I definitely like that one. I could see if you're a local, that would be a good spot for like a date night. But the other one we're gonna try, yeah. A little bit more rugged. Yeah, so it's when we were at yesterday where we had Amber with us and they said the dog would have been fine, but it was at capacity because of the coronavirus limit of 100 people. So hopefully it's not full capacity right no, now. No, and it's 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. So you figure like bars are less busy right now than of the, what time we were at there yesterday, like 11? Yeah. So these ruined bars are actually old converted apartment buildings and it's pretty cool because other than the fact that it's a bar with netting so that you can't actually go into the other apartment, it looks pretty similar to Airbnb. I have to admit, I never thought that I would see the day that I would bring my dog to a bar. The day has come. So we were debating whether going cheaper on the scale of beers for our next round here. And I knew it was cheap here, but I didn't know how much. So for a half liter of Staho Pumman, for two of them actually, it was $5.88 Canadian. So they're very cheap here. Like, that's the price that we paid for one at the last ruined pub that we went to. This is where we belong. So after leaving the bar, we ended up at the place that we originally made reservations at, which they said the dog was okay, which is called Mensa. So far, it's got a really weird vibe. Like it's as if you're like the decor looks modern, but the music and like the rest of the menu, everything else looks very old. We'll see. Final frontier of Hungarian dishes: goulash. It tastes like a stew, but not thick like a stew. It's like a soup. Good. So one of the things you realize when you're traveling all the time is that you are constantly looking at the GPS on your phone. And so that means by like 3 o'clock, you've got to walk around like this. 